is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Worldwide Sports Radio presents the, 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 the Haystack Show Yo. with Mike Guido. Oh, and here we go. It's Monday. It's the Haystack on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, WorldWideSportsRadio.com. Mike Guido, Evan Mazza, Big J Journalist, Matt Catarizzola here on a Monday. Short show today. Uh, but still plenty of, uh, splendid to go over. We had a really great, excuse me, really great uh, playoff weekend. Uh, national championship is tonight. Uh, I think that is going to be a historic, historic game. Um, so I'm going to leave this, uh, again, uh, we had a game plan, but we're, I'm, I'm going to leave this relatively open. Um, I, I'll say this. I think that the the Tennessee Titans are playing with a different energy than normal. Okay, this feels very, very Washington Nationals. You know, underdog, you know, usually with the heartbreak, they make the playoffs, but they really underwhelm. That You know, they're kind of forgotten about a lot. The Titans are not that right now. They're not, okay? This is... This is the kind of thing where they're playing with the energy. They're playing with that fire. Okay. Mike Vrabel has put together an absolutely incredible culture. Okay. If I would have told you that the Titans would go on the road, beat New England, then go on the road and beat Baltimore, and Ryan Tannehill wouldn't throw for over 100 yards in either game, you would have had me admitted this is where I, what I'm talking about. Okay, th- these are the kind of things where I mean the Ravens out timed, out yardaged, out everything. The Tennessee Titans and the Titans blew them out in their own building. It's unexplainable. This is one of those things where you just have to look at it and say, "All right, there's there is something different going on here." You're a Ravens fan, Evan. And they, I mean, they just have a different energy. They. What Tennessee did, yeah, did Baltimore outgate Baltimore outgate them? They they outgained them in yards. But the problem is, the Ravens' offense through the first three and a half quarters, right there, was twenty eight to six with four minutes to go, had one hundred eighty six yards passing. They couldn't move. They were stopped by the Titans' defense. The Titans' defense did a fantastic job. Any all credit to Mike Vrabel and Dean Pease who could who put up that defensive game plan. Uh, <clears throat> any lane Lamar Jackson had to run was closed off. He had nowhere to go. Uh, Lamar was in. Inac- Lamar had his troubles. He was inaccurate. They forced him into bad mistakes. The wide receivers dropped about six or seven balls. Right. The defense, the Ravens' defense, which has been great really since Week Five against Pittsburgh, got ran all over by Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is single-handedly taking over this postseason. He has been nothing short of fantastic. He's taking over this postseason. If there was such a thing as an NFL postseason MVP award. Win or lose on Sunday for the Titans, Derrick Henry should get that award. Correct. He's been fantastic. He has been phenomenal. Tennessee, but Tennessee had the perfect game plan and the perfect strategy to take to beat the Ravens. Get ahead early, get a tur- get some turnovers, stop this running game, and stop Lamar Jackson. They run the football and have Tannehill. While yeah, he only had eighty eight passing yards. Just get the completions you can. And they got as soon as they got one of the turnovers, right after they got the stop on fourth and inches, the first one, what was it? What was the next play for the Titans? Play action, pass to a wide open receiver, beats Marlon Humphrey, touchdown. Just like that. It's fourteen nothing. Right. They Tennessee had a great game plan. A great game plan. They are red hot as they head to Kansas City. So twenty eight to twelve, Titans beat the Ravens. Uh Niners over the Vikings, twenty seven ten. Uh, Chiefs over the Texans, 51-31, and then the Packers over the Seahawks, uh, 28-23. That's what we're looking at now. So Packers-Niners, we're seeing uh, now Titans and Chiefs uh, in the conference championship games. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Like I said, I never expected uh, expected Baltimore to be out this early. I, I don't know what it is. I can't pick playoff games this year. I just can't. What do you okay. know? Well, I, 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 I got was, I was one right one. last week. I got two right this week. Okay. I was three and one. Three and one this week. One and three. One and three this week. Maddie, Maddie I think, was three and one, too. Maddie and I had the same record. Mm-hmm. 
So who did you pick that you got wrong? Ravens? Ravens. We all did. Everyone did, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> we all, Figure. We no, all yeah, I, but listen, I got all of Saturday wrong because I, I had the Vikings over the Niners. I, I, I uh, You remember, Speedy told us it last week, okay? To, then Barrington told us last week, mm-hmm. okay? To, Vikings, Niners feels like the upset. But you know what San Francisco and did? And it wasn't even close. San Francisco, you know what they did? Right off the bat, didn't get off to that slow start that we all feared. Right off the bat, opening drive. Fantastic. Scored a touchdown just like that. They're up 7 nothing. So any, any yeah, questions Yeah, I love them, that conversation, too. Like, any it, question of them having a slow start was forget it. Because the story of that game is, is now becoming, well, Jimmy G gets it done. Really? Tevin, Kirk Cousins outplayed Jimmy G all Tevin, game. Tevin Coleman had three touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> like, you mean Jimmy G got it done. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it is crazy. a bad game, but like. No, those but niners, it, those niners you're right. Running backs. But they set the tone early with that opening drive touchdown. Right. They did, and the defense that defensive. And line. apparently, Kendrick Bourne is the greatest receiver of all time, because I, I seriously, I, I feel like every time I watch the Niners, he runs the same route in the in the end zone, the same time he catches the ball in the exact same spot. I mean, Kendrick Bourne probably has nine touchdowns this year that are all identical. Seriously, it's that crossing route in the back of the end zone, and every time I hear it, it's a touchdown to Kendrick Bourne. <laughs> I'm like. It's the same play. And, Come on. And the Niners, the, th- the theme of the Niners and how they want to get Minnesota is the same theme as Tennessee or later on the night. Offense and defensive line. Both lines. Run the, running run the, ball, running the ball, control the clock. That's how you win football games. And it's good because that's what, that's what Joe Judge plans to do with the Giants. It's an old school mm. mentality that a lot of people have downplayed as, you know, not effective in a more passing oriented league. Right. But he said, listen, you run the ball, stop the run. And that's exactly what Tennessee is doing very well right now. It's running well, Derrick the ball. Henry's controlling the playoffs. Exactly, He's running the ball and stopping the run. So if you have a dominant, it, listen, if you have a if you have a serviceable running game or a dominant one like the Titans do, and you have a dominant run stopping defensive line, apparently that works now. That yeah, it does. It works. It once, does. Once you get to November, December, and January, when the weather gets colder. The, the environments start to get more and more uh, that playoff feel, that, that's when offensive lines, defensive lines, a pass rush, a running game, and, a, and just not a great quarterback per se, but just an effective get-the-job-done kind of quarterback. And that's what the Giants had for, for years. The, Damon Harrison was, was the number one run-stuffing nose tackle in football. And now all we have, you know, we have these guys in the trenches, these defensive linemen. We have you know, that are all three hundred and fifty La- pounds. Lawrence, Davin, Tomlinson. We have guys that can stuff the trenches and stop the run. And but we have the best running back in football during the regular when the, season. When the Giants, Saquon won- Barkley. Yeah, look at me. I'm going to say it again. Saquon Barkley is the best running back <laughs> in football. Yeah. When the Giants won tell those- Derrick Henry that. Okay, well, Derrick Henry is just a monster. And, right and tell now. Christian they're, McCaffrey they're, that too. They're, 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 Christian McCaffrey's a better wide receiver. Than um, we're not going to get into that. Okay. Right? Okay. Not, I'm not okay. Gonna, I'm not yeah. Gonna okay. Get into it, okay. I'm not okay. Into it. Okay. 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 Yeah. It. It's yeah, fine. No. The Giants won those Super Bowls also with Tuck pass rush, Tuck Strahan, Barry Colfield, Manning mm-hmm. the middle, OCU Manura. Yep. You know that again. That was that was their strength and how they had, won, how they won. We the had Super power Bowls. running backs, Brandon Jacobs, Ahmad Bradshaw. We had guys that could do that. Tiki Barber in 07. Oh yeah. No. No, he was he retired left. after yeah. that. Yeah, he, he left retired. the year before. Wild. You love to see it. I <laughs> love, the, you love yeah. to see it. Yeah. Or do you, do, and if you're the Ravens, you just hate to see it. Mm-hmm. You hate to see it. No, uh, I love that. Not, not, and that's, and again, uh, for the Ravens, it's big picture. I'm not, ups- big picture, you can't be. Look, the Ravens, are, the Ravens are young. It's just and they're about talented. How they, it's just about Lamar, how they lost. Lamar is 23 here, and he's, he's going to win an, He's gonna win an MVP, and he's already had two bad playoff losses. Okay, you yeah, learn. Can from, we stop that whole argument yeah, thing too? You, you, like, you learn. From, this is not an indictment. I, no. I, how many times I've heard this? Like I told you, Lamar exposed. I'm like, C- really? Why? It's not. It's not an indictment. <laughs> it's he insane had, how people are putting it down like that. It's like, dude, th- this guy has experienced more in the NFL at this age than most guys have experienced after years in the league. Huh. He's going to win an MVP. He's had two devastating playoff losses. He'll bounce he's, back. He's going to grow from it, and he's going to get better. Bar, bounce, barring health, they're going to be around for a long time. Yeah, for real. He'll, he'll bounce back from it. You know, was I? I, I thought he. I definitely thought he'd play a lot better. We all did. We all thought he'd like play they're a lot like. Better. Listen, they're they're like the Niners. They're really good and they're really young. He'll bounce they're back. Really from good this. and they're really young. Right. Play to their strengths, and they're going to be around for a long time. Yeah. Listen, they can. Uh, they run the ball incredibly well. They have a great old line. 
Yeah, do they need a pass rusher? Yes. Do they need a middle linebacker? Yes. Could they use another receiver? A, yes. A big get up, go up and get it receiver to compliment Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, Hollywood and Justin Tucker were the two guys that were out of everywhere. Everyone was bad against yeah. the Ravens except Tucker and Hollywood Brown. Was My, it, Hollywood Brown is going to be really good. The AFC, the AFC for over a decade has been dominated by Brady and the Patriots, and now we're going to see it dueling between Mahomes and Lamar Jackson for and Deshaun Watson for the Correct. next whatever it is, right. 15 years, 10, 15 years. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, coming up next, we'll get a little bit into the national championship game. We'll play a little by yourself because that's Evan's favorite game. I fa- like I said, free, you know, free, uh, free reign show today. No, no structure, no nothing. No national championship by yourself coming up next. It's the Haystack of the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're listening to the Haystack Show on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Good to have you back. Haystack, Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Mike, Evan, Matt here on a Monday. Uh, Absolutely loaded. We have the national championship game tonight. LSU's five-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, It is in Louisiana. That's kind of unfair. They get to play the – they virtually get to play the national championship at home. They don't have to travel at all. That's garbage. I mean, you know – at least Clemson's not traveling from Montana, then, you know, they'll be all right. But um, In a dome, no less. Yeah, but uh, the play's going to be loaded with LSU fans. Oh, yeah. Like, absolutely loaded. In the great state of Louisiana. Go Tigers. Who's that supposed to be? Is that, was that, did that not <laughs> sound like Ed Orgeron at all? I'm hearing myself in my own headset. That sounds like Ed Orgeron. Go Tigers. Nah, dude, not ring the bell. Sorry. Congratulations on making it to number one. Can't wait to see this one versus two showdown coming up. And uh, all the best. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. <laughs> nah, dude, sorry. I don't hear the resemblance. Are you kidding <laughs> me? I don't hear the resemblance. Oh. Screw you. <laughs> oh, we got to we gotta keep doing this now to, see, to hear it. Come on, Evan. I, what do you think? Hold on. Wait, we got to hear it again. We got to hear it again. Hold on. We got to hear it again. We got to hear it again now. It's number one. Can't wait to see this one versus two showdown coming up. And uh, all the best. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. It sounds exactly <laughs> the same. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Not that one. That one I was kind of laughing midway through. Nah. You'll get better. Evan, come on. You'll get better, Evan. Nice. Uh, Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Nah, you'll get better. It's, it's like it's hanging. It's got, it's got hanging. Me, it's, got it's, me right. like, it's got me like this. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Thank yeah, you. but your voice is too high pitched for that. Thank you, Reese. Shorter and more concise. Thank you, Reese. Go Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. Tigers. Hmm. Let's hear it again. Like, come on. Reese, go Tigers. Thank you, Reese. Go Tigers. That's right, dude. You go come home, on. It's dude, right you, there. Just go home in the mirror and practice. <laughs> no. that's <laughs> Go home in the mirror. In the practice. mirror? What am I going to do? <laughs> so I don't Inflate to this <laughs> massive you know, boulder of a guy. The, I'm from the great state of Louisiana. Like, it, yeah, dude. Practice. You'll get better. Practice. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about practice. I wonder if Caliendo does, a, does an Ed Orgeron You know, impression. that's a good question. We should probably, He'd probably, we should probably find He'd probably, probably do a killer. Have you, seen, have you seen the videos that Frank Caliendo puts up of him and his daughter doing the impressions together? Like, he's, he did, like, a no. Gruden. They're, like, sitting on the couch watching the playoffs, and he starts, like, a video, and he's like, we're gonna do a little John Gruden, and he like he literally points it over. She's already like with the eyebrows and everything like that. <laughs> I think it's a hey, folks, welcome to John Madden football. I can't do John Madden, but <laughs> uh, but she's um, hey, boom. Hey, we're gonna Brett Favre. Brett Favre's gonna take a Tom Brady. And she does. She does. She does the and then she does the boom. And then she does the boom. Al Michaels, welcome to Madden NFL football. <laughs> hey, folks, John Madden here. Like, it's just, it's so funny. It is so funny. Uh, John Emery, another, another great young man from Destrahan, Louisiana. Hold on a second. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm having a press conference, okay? Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm having a press conference. Thank you. <laughs> Ed Orgeron might be one of my favorite people of all time. I He's it, so great. I said it to you before we went on the air. I don't if Ed. I don't. And care there are not a lot care. of more likable college football coaches than Dabo Sweeney. It, d- 
I don't Ed Orgeron care. might be one of them. I don't <laughs> care if Ed Orgeron goes in the NFL and has has like a two and fifty record, two one hundred record. I want I just want him to coach in the NFL. I just want to, I just want to see Ed Orgeron coaching an NFL football. Team. Listen, I look. I would love to see him coach in the NFL too, but I would be perfectly content if he stays in college. If he stayed at LSU forever, he's destined. Yeah, right. he's destined to coach there until he's like eighty. Uh, seriously, like, yeah, uh, give it, give him the lifetime contract now. I mean, Ed Orgeron could be there as long as he wants. And there was, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. When LSU fired Les Miles, I was like, what are you doing? Why? Les Miles was a good football coach. And then they hired Ed Orgeron, and after a few years, I, I started to, okay, right. I, I, I get it a little bit. Because Ed is just a, like, he's a different animal. I mean, that program is back to being... Just so incredibly good. They are a massive powerhouse now. Yeah. That like LSU is back. Now, here's the thing. The national championships tonight, I think it's gonna be a historic game. Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow, who I think are the two best quarterbacks in the country, two best players in the country. I mean, this is just uh, this feels I said this off the air. This feels like the Super Bowl to me. Okay, the rosters to me cancel out, right? Wide receivers are virtually the same, right? Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson for LSU, T. Higgins and Justin Ross for Clemson. You get the, the Edwards Hilaire and you get Travis Etienne and then you get, you know, A.J. Terrell and uh, Isaiah Simmons and guys like that for Clemson. LSU's got Grant Delpit and Christian Fulton and that guy Derek Stingley, who everybody loves. I, it, like, both these teams are loaded. Kayla Von Chase on, it's just... They're just all these guys have these te- both these teams have massive massive talent. So again, this feels like a Super Bowl to me. This feels like all right, winner of this game, who's the better quarterback? So I like LSU tonight. And again, it, like LSU has just dominated everybody all year. I I, I can't see them. I, I can't see anybody beating them this year. They are just on a different level. We talked about we, we've been talking a lot about Ed Ordra on this segment. But we did. You also did bring up just a bit Dabo Sweeney. Dabo has been there before. He's this is another national championship game for him. This is Ed Orgeron's first as a, as a head football coach. We're talking about the quarterbacks. Does the coaching? Does the coaching matchup? Because I mean, we saw it. We, I think we saw it against Ohio State pretty much. Right, Dabo Sweeney against Ryan Day. Dabo outcoached Ryan Day. Dabo Dabo went to work against Ryan Day. He outcoached him. Could the same be possible for Dabo Sweeney against Ed Orgeron? As good of a coach as Ed Orgeron is. That could be that definitely I think plays a factor, right? Uh, tonight for Clemson, we'll see. Uh, look, I, I I I am extremely excited for this, extremely excited. I can't wait for it. Um, so national championship tonight on ESPN uh, at eight o'clock. I listen. I think Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in the country, but I think Joe Burrow is having the best season out of a quarterback in a, in college football history. Uh, again, we'll see. I think they're both going to be stars in the NFL. I think we're going to look back on this game in a number of years and say, yeah, these two guys played together, uh, played against each other in college in the col- uh, in the national championship game. I mean, this is this is something that I think is going to be a – this will be historic. This will be the best college football game that we'll see in a while. LSU and Clemson in Louisiana at the Superdome. Uh, it's going to be – it is going to be phenomenal. It really is. And from what I heard yesterday, uh, Bourbon Street was taken over by the LSU marching band yes, uh, last night. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, it, the environment there has got to be crazy. I, a lot of uh, what I would pay to be in game. New Orleans right now, I, I, would, I, would be, I would do anything to see this football game live, really. It's going to be a home game for LSU. It's going to be an absolute home game. I don't know, Matt, but, you, you win on this too, LSU. Absolutely. and I'm just, buying all the hype, dude. I mean, this is just going to be insane. I got we're, LSU we're gonna, tonight. Exactly. We're going to look back in like a couple. Of, we're like four or five years, and we say, "Man, remember when Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow that's what battled I mean. it out? Like now they're like, well, we're not going to say they're. We don't know where they'll be in their NFL careers, but they're if they're as special as they are now, and and they live up to all the expectations, we can say like, wow, these we, two played I'll against each other like, in wow, college. We, we didn't appreciate that enough when we saw them play for the national title. I'll say this though: even if they, even if they have, NFL, I think they're both going to have really good NFL careers. But it, it, I, with the expectations of this game and how great this game has the potential to be, we can look back at something like '06 with the the Rose Bowl national title game with Vince Young and the Texans against, and the Texas Longhorns against Matt Leinart and USC. 
yeah, Young and Leonard didn't have didn't have uh, good NFL careers. They were they were they were busts. But we still vaguely remember that game and say, wow, remember when Vince Young and the Texas Longhorns took on Matt Leinart and that USC team with Reggie Bush and those guys? I think that we, we, can, we, can have, we have the potential to look at that, this game with, with Lawrence and Joe Burrow in kind of that same light. Well, what about what a, the hype. Even, even like Florida and Alabama with Tebow and, Tebow, and Mark Ingram Mark and Ingram, right. Aaron Hernandez even at the time too? Right. Who it was uh, – was, uh, was – um, was it uh, McLaurin, the quarterback? For, uh, no, 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 no. The uh, uh, the quarterback, the one of the one of the receivers for Bama was Julio a receiver yes, for Bama at that yes, time. Yes, twenty eleven. Yes, Julio. it was right. Yes, yeah, twenty ten. Yes, Julio. Yeah, a lot of yeah. good like, dude. Oh, Listen, God, wow. Tim Tebow is the best college football player I've ever seen in my life. Joe Burrow's knocking on the door mm-hmm. like that. Uh, you know, the only thing that Tim Tebow has over Burrow is Tim Tebow's got multiple great years under his belt. Yeah. Joe Burrow's got one. You know, so that's. The, uh, that weighs into it, but again, historic game tonight. He's the best Clemson, college LSU. football player or quarterback. Tebow. Tebow. Yeah, the best college football player I've ever seen. Wow. The best college football player I've ever seen was Tim Tebow. Wow. Why? Who's who should be ahead of him? No, no, I'm not saying that's ridiculous. I'm just I'm I'm trying to think like who really has been dominant like in college. Like Lamar was pretty. Lamar was. Yeah. Pretty crazy. You can look all. You can look back at all the all the Heisman Trophy winners, like Re- Reggie Bush. Yeah, Reggie Bush. You know, even um, even uh, Saquon. I was just. That's the next one. I don't know. Like, yeah, it was at least Saquon. <laughs> Derrick Henry. I mean, Heisman Saquon didn't win a Heisman, but but Saquon was really doesn't good matter. Doesn't matter. Sorry, but Saquon was really He's worthy good, of yes. ten Heisman's. Derrick Henry was a Heisman winner. Derrick Henry. Um, Julio was a Mariota winner. Winston. Mariota Winston. I mean. Yeah, you, <laughs> There's a lot. Of, hey, that's and that's not proves to you that Heisman's don't. don't RG three, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. RG three, I would say, was is a, was pretty pretty. RG three was really yeah. great. RG three was really good, uh, really great. But uh, all right, LSU, Matt, you're on LSU. Mm-hmm. Evan, who do you like? Um, I am gonna take LSU, although I am pretty tempted to look at to say Clemson because again the experience. Uh, Dabo Sweeney had, especially with Dabo Sweeney over at at, over at Ogeron. Uh and I did pick. I picked Ohio State when they when they took on Clemson, uh, and I Clemson ended up winning. But I am going to take LSU in this game because I, I, I they're just on another level right now. They're playing so well. Joe Burrow has been the best quarterback all season long. You know, if you're a Cincinnati Bengals fan, you're watching this game really really closely because he's going to be your guy. He's going to be your he's going to be your quarterback in twenty twenty in twenty twenty next year when you when you step on the field week one. Uh, most likely, so I'm gonna I, I'll take LSU in a great game. I'll, I'll say 38-35 LSU. I wow, think that's it's it. A great football game. I'm gonna go 47-44 LSU. Wow. All right. Wait. Okay. So all right, hold on. Hold on. It certainly hit the. It certainly could. LSU the hung. LSU hung 63 on Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma's defense. Is I know, just, but sti- I, I mean, okay. So all right, LSU hit 63. Clemson's on Oklahoma. Clemson. Came back from what was it like sixteen nothing against Ohio State or thirteen or fourteen nothing something like that yeah. something like that right oh man yeah I think it's gonna be a pretty uh, all right I I like I like around you Ev I like like I think it's gonna be closer I think it's gonna be like a I'm gonna say forty one thirty five LSU all right there we go oh I can't wait for this game man Matt Catarazzolo with the news. We're waiting. I thought you, no, I thought uh, I, okay. I, I, I told you fine. news was happening, <laughs> Evan, and you didn't listen. It's there it is. Fine, Evan. Jesus. I thought I don't know, we were kind of mixing and matching. No, 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 no. I told you news was happening. Anyways. And you said and you said, you know what, Mike? I'm just gonna be dumb and not listen to you. Evan, That's why I hate you. Evan went rogue. It's fine. It's fine. it's fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So over the weekend in the midst of all this playoff football chaos. Uh, the last NFL head coaching vacancy has been. What's the opposite of vacancy? It's occupied. I think it's un vacancy. Un vacantified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has been taken. Whatever. The last vacant head coaching job has been taken. The Cleveland Browns hired uh, former Vikings offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski as the seventh head coach since Jimmy Haslam purchased the franchise in 2012. The GM that joins Kevin Stefanski will be the sixth since 2012. So that's that. six GMs, six GMs, and eight seven years. head coaches in eight years. That's crazy. Now there were they interviewed eight eight coaches 
but there were seven that they realistically could have hired because Mike McCarthy got hired by the Cowboys. Yep. So, out of the seven guys they hired, so they uh, interviewed, it was Stefanski, Robert Sala, Josh McDaniels, Greg Roman, uh, Brian Dable, and the, was Martin it the Dale? enemy? Eric B. Enemy, and... Did, did they interview Martindale? No. No, and they interviewed one more, and it's going to kill me. Who's the light? Wait, 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 who'd you say? You said McDaniels, the enemy, Saleh, uh, Stefanski. McDaniels, the Oh, Jim Schwartz, Jim Schwartz. And Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz that That's it. right. So, out of those guys, and I did like a grade sheet, I I was going to save this segment for, for later in the week, but I'll, I'll kind of give it away a little bit now. I'll, I, maybe I'll do it again. But I five things in coaching, I gave every one of those guys a scale from one uh, a grade from one to five in that category right so leadership scheme adaptability accolades like history experience all that stuff and player development so those five things I factored in and based on the scores Kevin Stefanski was fifth out of seven yep so this is this was one of those things where I like I like, okay, it could be okay, but as of right now, the way that I see it is it's it's the fifth best option they would have had. The only, I, I think, I think Biennemi was first, Robert Sala was second, mm-hmm. I think McDaniels was third, and I think Greg Roman was fourth. And then I, th- uh, then it was Stefanski, Jim Schwartz, and then Brian Dable. Yeah. So, like, uh, again... It's just like it's all right. It's like it's an it's an all right hire. Yeah, I don't think any Browns fan is like, yo, Stefanski. Like, I don't think anyone's really ecstatic about this hire. I think they're going to take it for what it is, see if it pans. Head, listen, head coaching hires, coordinators that become head coaching hires, it's really just a wait and see situation. Exactly. So, like, unless they have a proven track record as a head coach prior to becoming a coordinator, I don't think there's really any reason for excitement because every team is different, the personnel, the players. That's why I'm not the verdict, like, that's why I'm not over the moon for Joe Judge right now. Like, if you're a coordinator who's a rookie head coach, I mean, okay, uh, Stefanski's never been a head coach before, Judge has never been a head coach before, uh, Matt Rule has never been a head coach in the NFL before. So, you know, it's a lot of waiting and seeing for these guys. You right. know, you, you got to, I mean, Mike Mike McCarthy, everyone was saying, like, he's a proven head coach, okay? But he was with one team his whole NFL coaching career. This is a different team, different players, different personnel, different Well, his office. head coaching career, yeah. Right. So For a decade. Exactly. So it's 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 a lot different. And, I, and you're going from Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers to Dak Prescott. You know, so so it's, it's going to be different. So, uh, you know, and the Cleveland Browns... I mean, I mean apparently Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski was a guy that they wanted last year. He's another name but that's But John Dorsey yeah. wanted Freddie Kitchens, Listen, so... Stefanski's name was like McDaniels. It's always floating around head coaching vacancies, and, and honestly... I, for the I Brown, don't know, maybe. Look, for the Browns' sake, I hope that this... Because who was the last Vikings offensive coordinator to get a head coaching job in the NFL? Pat Shermer. It's Pat Shermer. So right. hopefully for the Browns' sake, this ends up as a, a little bit better than him. Moving on, Kansas City Chiefs. A historic comeback over the Houston Texans after being down 24-0 yesterday in the divisional round. They, are, they become the first team in NFL playoff history to win a game. It trailed by more than 14 points after the first quarter. Led by the magic of Patrick Mahomes, five passing touchdowns, three touchdowns in three and a half minutes. I mean, just incredible stuff. I, yeah. Just a unbelievable comeback for the Chiefs, but I can't, I can't get on board with the Texans at this moment in time. I think I'm done ever looking at the Texans as a legit Super Bowl threat. I can't, I'm done. You, you, when you, when you go on the road and you're up 24 nothing like that. Early in the game, you've silenced the crowd, you've silenced the Chiefs' offense, you, you've left the Chiefs in shock, and you just let this game get away from you. Give up, a, and it was just a series of events. A kickoff return leads to a touchdown. The just unbelievable decision to go for it and do that fake punt in your own territory. I, I don't understand it. I never will understand it. Led to another touchdown. Listen, Got a kickoff, fumble, touchdown. The gap, the gap between the quarterbacks, between Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes, is not. 
huge. huge. Watson is going to be a star, but Mahomes is a different level. But the the coaching gap between Bill O'Brien and Andy Reid was evident and very much on display that whole game. Andy Reid, it just goes to show. If you have there was never a sense of panic from Andy Reid with Kansas City down twenty four nothing. That that's a lead. Listen, twenty eight to three. In the Super Bowl, and you go fifty-one and se- you go on a fifty-one to seven run. Like that, that's like, like if someone told they you they had what eight, seven or eight consecutive drives. I think so. Their first where they eight, scored a touchdown. Their first eight so. drives. Their first eight drives. It was punt, 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 and then Mahomes TD, Mahomes TD, Mahomes TD, Mahomes TD. Yeah. Unreal. Absolutely Jeez. unreal. Yeah. How can like how you gotta feel you gotta feel that like, offense. Altogether is just you have to feel stupid. you have to feel great if you're a Kansas City fan. You're down twenty four nothing and your team can just come back like that. What yeah. what else can you do? There's oh, nothing yeah. you can't do. Oh yeah, this uh, this AFC Championship game is going to be very good. I need to. That's why dude, it's, I need to see. Uh, either, I think either of the NFC opponents, either listen the, the Niners pass rush or the Green Bay pass rush. And those defenses, I think, will be a great matchup for Kansas well, City's offense. I, I would take San Francisco's pass rough. Well, rough. yeah, I, listen, I, I, I think it's considerably better. I than, would say, listen, I would take Bosa and Armstead and Buckner over Preston, Zadarius Smith, Blake Martinez, those guys. But still, I mean, listen, it's not, it's not that far off. I would still, I would still think that both of them are pretty good tests. I'm telling you, Niners Chiefs would be the ideal. would be an unbelievable Super Bowl. I would be so on board for that. The Chiefs eight, so on board for that. The Chiefs went on an eight drive stretch where they scored seven straight touchdowns, and then the last one was a field goal. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. incredible. All right, last thing. So. The long-anticipated NBA debut of Zion Williamson is expected to be this Thursday night. <gasps> Real? I didn't hear about that. Yes. Really? My eyes are going to be glued to the... Guess what we are starting with on Friday? Is it Zion Mania? It'll be Zion Mania on Friday. Who are they playing? The Celtics. Wait, wait, is it... Oh, and he's playing Boston. Is it in Boston or in New Orleans? It's probably a primetime game, isn't it? So, they are... At TD Garden. So, that so it's in, be in Boston. Boston. It's in Boston. Oh, no. It's, it's a 6 o'clock game on ESPN. Oh, excellent. So it is. All right. So it is going to be a game that will be nationally televised. Let's go. I, oh, I'm, so, so, I'm going to be all over that basketball game. Williamson missed the entire season to date uh, due to surgery he underwent on October 21st to repair a damaged meniscus in his right knee. The original timetable the Pelicans set for his return was six to eight weeks and we actually passed that projection uh, comeback date of December 16th, which was almost a, a month, month ago. ago. So, uh, you know, yeah, this is his, uh, his long-anticipated debut of, you know, the best NBA prospect since LeBron. I'm telling you right now, Zion Williamson, if healthy, will dominate the league from day one. He will dominate the NBA Lonzo's, from day and, one. And Lonzo and Brandon Ingram looks like they're finding their own they're in New Orleans. They're shaping into something. Like, exactly. But all of their young talent, right? Like, Jackson Hayes looks like a real player. Yeah. Nikhil Alexander-Walker looks like a real player. Like, the, the Pelicans are... Still got Drew Holiday there. Right, veteran, exactly. Veteran they're presence. they're, they're rolling. They're rolling with this. And they got veterans. They've got favors. They have Redick. You know what I mean? Like... Okay. Very exciting. We're starting to move a little bit here. And here's another one. Don't forget about Jaleel Okafor. Okay. Jaleel Okafor in limited minutes can really play. He really can. Uh, that guy's got a lot of upside. So, but I, uh, let, I'll tell you this. This is going to be one of those situations. This will be one of those situations where the second Zion Williamson steps on the court, He's going to captivate everybody. Everybody. Okay? He's an unbelievable player to watch. And I know people are going to say, well, he's still a rookie. He's a young kid. He's going up against men in the NBA. Zion Williamson is already bigger than anybody in the NBA. He's the biggest, most athletic guy in the league already. Age, does, age doesn't mean anything. You look at John Morant right now. He's cooking the league. I know. John Morant's great. John Morant's amazing. John Morant's great. Uh, 
Tyler Hero is real good. Oh, like shoot the lights out. I mean, listen, there are a lot of players. I mean, listen, it, as inefficient as R.J. Barrett has been, R.J. Barrett looks like he's going to be a real Balled good player. Balled out last night. Yeah, Might I, mean, I add, listen, you know, people still, like, the listen, you say what you want about the Knicks. If you watch that game last night, or at least the highlights, if you see and hear how loud the Garden gets when they won last night, a ten, that's a 10-29 and 29 team, and that place was rocking. Rocking. I'm not kidding. Go, listen, the next time, next opportunity you got. Fans love the Knicks, but that, I'm telling you right now, fans love the Knicks, but they are so quick to jump down players' throats if they don't succeed. I'm telling you right now, it's, the thing is, is that New York is great when you're bad and you're supposed to be bad, but if you're good, like it, it would never have worked out for Kevin Durant. Like, if Kevin Durant had gone to New York... Oh, absolutely. ...either have gotten hurt, or he had he hadn't won a title, or anything like that, he had underperformed, New York is the worst place to play ever. They will yep. crucify you. Absolutely. I mean, it, it killed Carmelo Anthony's career. It killed it. Towards the end, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Like, come on, there, people, people worship... Knicks fans worship Melo. Yeah, now... How many how many Knicks fans wanted Melo gone uh, in his last years? A lot, a I lot. myself included. And now everybody's in brand. like, "Oh, Melo, come back!" Well, for the last two years, you wanted the guy dead. I mean, uh, to me, it's really interesting. But either way, Zion against Boston, and Boston doesn't rebound well. They don't have really that many intimidating bigs. Taco Fall. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, now, is he going to start? Is he going <laughs> to be on a probably? Is not. he going to limit a uh, minutes restriction? I'm sure. Probably. Uh, well, they start. They start. Dan- what Tice and yeah, they start what Tice. The don't Celtics. They, they yeah. Tice and Tatum or Hayward. Yeah. yeah. So it's. But if Zion goes in there and he, uh, if Zion plays 25 minutes, 20 and 12. Really? Okay. 20 and 12. He's going to get the ball, and he's going to do stuff with it. I'm telling you right now. All right, that's the news. Big J journalist Matt Catarizzolo here on a Monday. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, coming up next, buy or sell. We'll close out the show with that. It's because it's Evan's favorite game. And Hello. Whatever. I hate you, Evan. <laughs> that's next. You're, Taste welcome, that. you're welcome, by the way. Worldwide Sports Radio Network. <laughs> you're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're, you're, you're listening to the Haystack Show on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Good to have you back. Haystack Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Mike, Evan, Matt here on a Monday. Uh, so uh, here we go. We don't usually do this on a Monday, but we'll do it today anyway. Buy or sell. Evan, here we go. All right. First up, buy or sell. The Cleveland Browns hiring Kevin Stefanski will bring more structure to the Browns than if they would have hired Josh McDaniels. Buy or sell? Sell. I'm going to sell that. I'm not sure McDaniels would have done a great job either, but I do think out of the two, I think McDaniels graded as the better candidate, so I'm going to sell that. Uh, Matty? I agree. Uh, Saying that Stefanski can do something better than someone like McDaniels could do is... A little premature because, I mean, listen, they, it's, it, they both had the same job title. They were both offensive coordinators prior to this. But, I mean, McDaniels has head coaching experience. You can have your opinions on that, whatever they are. But he has head coaching experience, no matter how brief. And uh, he was instrumental in the most impressive dynasty in American team sports history. So, I mean, a guy like that, no matter what your opinions on him, I think still would have had a very positive impact on that on that Browns team, and I don't, I don't really know if Stefanski understands the gravity of the expectations of this Browns team and how they let that down last year. So, I mean, I sell, would, sell, sell. I think, yeah, I'm going to sell that. Bar, so if Lamar Jackson, now both of us, all of us are saying, all of us agree that Lamar Jackson's uh, bad postseason performance on Saturday isn't, you know, a diamond on him. It doesn't mean that he's a bad postseason player. It's only been two games, but next year, if Lamar has another bad playoff performance. We can then say he needs to be better in the postseason. We can start 
we can start saying he can, he needs to be better in the playoffs. If he has another one next year, buy or sell. Sell. Uh, I don't buy that at sell, all. Sell, sell, sell. Here's the thing. I, I think a lot of uh, playoff football has a lot to do with context. I don't think that Lamar Jackson is a bad playoff player. I think he played fine in this last uh, in this last playoff game. He didn't play with clean pockets. Okay, he suffered four sacks. Okay, for a non-mobile quarterback, that's like the that's the equivalent of having ten sacks. Okay, so it's just he got no help. A bunch of offensive players were playing hurt. Uh, and the Titans are on this crazy run right now where they're just mowing over teams. I, I, no, I, I'm going to sell that. I don't think Lamar's a bad postseason player, and I think it'd be unfair to designate, uh, designate that with him going forward in the future, especially if we don't know the context of the game yet. Uh, I agree. I'm going to sell only because... Sell, sell, sell! Uh, I think Lamar, uh, again, like Lamar is young. He's only 23, and this is a young Ravens team. Has a very bright future ahead of him, so I don't. I don't think three playoff. If he loses again next year, that'll be three playoff losses in three straight years. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, I agree with Mike. There's a lot of a lot of other factors that play into it, not just Lamar's individual performance alone. Uh, however, I do believe that uh, these are going to be learning experiences for Lamar, and I think that he will only get better. But no, I don't buy the narrative that. He needs to play better. I think it's there's a lot of other things that have to do with it. Plus, Lamar's work ethic is unbelievable. I mean, anything that he was struggling with over the course of the year, he's going to be working tirelessly on. Right. So he still listen. He he drastically improved his passing ability, and he's going to drastically improve it even more. The difference in this coming off season. The difference between of him last year and this year is really incredible. The, from the difference between last year where he was at this point last year to what he is now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And uh, I do think this. It's going to be there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be there with him this offseason about his postseason performance It's so far in his young career. It's going to be there this year. I don't think we should be – I don't think it's good to do it now. But if it, does con- if it does continue within, say, two years, then the talking – then it will – the talking, might, I think, would be fair. Because every quarterback is determined on how they perform in the postseason. We look at Kirk Cousins. We look at you know recent guys like Kirk Cousins, guys in the past like Peyton Manning, Matt Ryan, et cetera, right? Right. The postseason is, is – Eli. I mean, Eli Manning, right? Before 07, everyone questioned how good he can be in the postseason because he had two really bad stinkers in the playoffs. And then 07, he went on this great Super Bowl run. So I do think if it continues into next year and maybe even the year after – then it might be fair for Lamar Jack. It might be fair to say, hey, Lamar's got to be a lot better in the po- postseason and question how good he could be as a postseason player. Right now, today, on Monday, on Monday, January 12th or 13th. I think 13th. 13th. I don't think so. But we'll see what happens. With, we'll see what happens. I, Lamar, Lamar will learn from this. He's going to learn from this and get back to work. You'll, he, he'll, and he'll get better from this. I agree with you guys on that. Barcel, Bill O'Brien cost the Texans the game on Saturday. No, I'm going to sell that, too. Sell, I, sell, sell. I don't think it's entirely on him. Listen, I, their defense played absolutely horrible for three quarters. I mean, sir, the, the Houston Texans defense after the first quarter was atrocious. I mean, it was a atro- Texans get out 24 nothing. I don't care what anybody says. The offense of the Texans uh, yesterday did their job. They did their job, okay? That defense can't lay an egg like that late in the game. I, I, I just, I, no, I'm not going to, like, I do think Bill O'Brien deserves some responsibility, but at some point you got to look at the defensive side of the football and say, where were you? Because it was already a bad matchup. Bad pass defense with Houston against the best passing offense in Kansas City. So the fact that they were ahead early in that game was amazing to me. So, no, I'm not going to put it all on Bill O'Brien. you got to put some on the defense, defensive coaching staff, all of that stuff. So I'm going to sell. Sell, sell, that. sell. Yeah, I'm selling that too. That's it. Sell, sell, sell. You can't just blame Bill O'Brien. I mean, you have to look at so many other things. Like, I mean, at that point, I would, I would maybe look at Romeo Cornell more than, more than Bill O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I, yeah. So, I mean, no, the the collapse of the Houston Texans yesterday on the defensive side of the ball is not entirely on Bill O'Brien's shoulders. Buy or sell on the final year of his contract next year. It will be Kirk Cousins' final year in a Vikings jersey. So next year will be his last with the Vikings. Last year of his contract. I'm going to sell that. I think they bring him back. Sell, sell, sell. Listen, uh, Kirk Cousins is 
it, I, first of all, I think next year he's going to have a very similar year to what he had this year. He's going to have another good year, and the Vikings are going to have to ask themselves, all right, Kirk Cousins is going to be 32 or whatever he is, and do we want to enter the quarterback pool or do we want to bring in the guy that we've had some success with? Okay, what Kirk Cousins showed you this uh, these past two weeks is that whole big game thing is off his back. It's definitely off his back. He was playing with a lot more comfort. He was playing a lot more relaxed. This is not the same Kirk Cousins. Okay, this is not going to be you know, something where it'll plague him for the rest of his career. Because he made some dynamite throws. He made some dynamite plays in both of these games when they needed them. So I, I, I'm going to sell that. I think the Vikings bring him back. I sell it too. I think that sell, sell, sell. Once he, once the final year of his contract is up, I do think, however, they'll listen to offers. But I mean, no, I don't think that. I, I, I think the Vikings want right now. They, they like Kirk. They, they believe they, they found their guy to get them where they want to go. And, I mean, they, they want to capitalize. They have all these guys on They have, you know, Cook, Thielen, Diggs. They have all these guys. Kyle Rudolph. They have all these guys that they want to capitalize on. They have yeah. one of the best top-to-bottom rosters in football. And I think they just need to find their groove. And when they find it, I think they, they, have, a serious, they have serious championship potential, whether that's with Kirk or not. But I, I, I don't see them moving off him next year. There are three areas where I think Minnesota has to improve. They do still need to get better on the offensive line. They they need two brand new guards. Two brand new guards and maybe a tackle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Brian O'Neill's a solid right tackle, and I think Garrett Bradbury's a solid center. Riley Reef is eh at left tackle, and they are awful at both guard spots. They need three uh, two or three offensive linemen. Uh they need more depth at corner. And I think they desperately, and not a lot of people recognize this desperately need more depth at wide receiver. After Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs, it is nothing. It's Treadwell. It Tread- is Treadwell. Yeah, it's Tread- Ola B.C. Johnson. I yeah, mean, it's but, just... But they Treadwell, are, Treadwell isn't, isn't performing it, up to potential. That's what I mean. Is the Vikings is, realistically... I, they have two really great receivers at the top. And then nothing. But beyond that, it is nothing. A great tight end, Kyle Rudolph. Yeah. They, they have two really good ones. Uh, really Kyle Rudolph awesome. and Irv Smith Irv were both Smith. really good this year. Yeah. So I, I think they could use some more depth at wide receiver as well. Buy or sell. This season, this postseason, is Aaron Rodgers' last shot to win a, to win a second Super Bowl title. Uh, no, I'm going to sell that. I, I don't sell, sell, sell. Listen, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a few more opportunities that – the Packers have actually done a really nice job at, you know, bringing in some defensive pieces. Uh, they tried to restructure the offensive line a little bit, give them a little bit of, uh, a little bit more protection. They, they traded for Billy Turner. They drafted Elton Jenkins. The, I mean, it makes a lot of sense that they did all that. Uh, now their focus has to be perimeter players. You know, maybe they build the offensive line a little bit more, but perimeter players, wide receivers. They've got Devontae Adams. He's great. But give him a number two, number three receiver. Because I'm not sure, like, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, Geronimo Allison, Jake Kumaro, Alan Lazard, any of those guys. I'm not sure any of those guys are any more than number four receivers. I just don't think they're any good. You know, Devontae Adams, clearly a number one. You need more talent on the perimeter. There's more guys that Aaron Rodgers needs to throw to. But, no, I'm going to sell that. I think uh, there's a lot of selling today, but... Aaron Rodgers will definitely have more opportunities for Super Bowls. I agree. I, I, I'm with that. I, 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 I definitely agree with Mike. I'm going to sell that. Sell, and, sell, sell. Uh, listen, they, they, who are the two most important players that the Packers acquired in free agency? Zadarius, Zadarius, Zadarius Smith, Smith and Preston Smith. Okay, both on four-year deals. They're going to be in Green Bay for the next three seasons after this. They're a big part of why this Packers team has gotten over the hump. Right. Fin- uh, Aaron Rodgers finally has listen. Uh, there's enough excuses that have been made for Aaron Rodgers. Okay, uh, the lack of defensive help, no running game. Uh, McCarthy pretty much McCar- was taking the fall. Right, McCarthy. Uh, the feud with the head coach. Matt Lafleur looks like a great fit. Their relationship looks pretty solid. Uh, they have a stellar defense right now, and they have a very, very good, solid, productive running back in Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams too. So. 
I mean, listen, Jimmy Graham is not what Jimmy Graham used to be, but he can still, you know, get the job done as a contributing tight end. Right. You just said it. Devontae Adams is a solid top five, six receiver in football. Oh, yeah. So, uh, no, I don't think this is Aaron Rodgers' last shot at a postseason run. No, absolutely not. The Ravens' season, despite despite everything, the 14-2, and two, everything like that that they had, and the first-round exit, the Ravens' season was a success. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. There, there we go. We buy, bought buy, something. Buy. Buy I, I absolutely, we, I we absolutely, the Ravens' season was a, uh, was a success. I am all in on this notion. There's, uh, to me, there's like, to, to me, there's no way that you can think otherwise. Okay, Lamar Jackson. The biggest thing is Lamar Jackson proved himself as a passer. Okay, and people that say that he didn't wake up. Come on. Like, if I showed you Lamar Jackson's numbers without the rushing numbers and you didn't know who it was, you would think that this was Big Ben. You would think it's Matt Ryan. Ask Give him, me a break. You ask, wouldn't be questioning at all. Ask Lamar Jackson before the season began how he looked last year. He'll tell you. Like, yeah, I, need I mean, his completion percentage jumped from 58% to 66%. That doesn't happen. Okay, Cam never was able to do that. Kaepernick was never able to do that. RG3 was never able to do that. Tim Tebow never did that. Uh, Lamar Jackson is improving as a player dramatically. This is an incredible roster. The Ravens have a really great future ahead of them. They're incredibly well coached. I I mean, yeah, it was absolutely a success. This is a wake-up call to the NFL that the Ravens are coming. And I understand that they're disappointed that they didn't make it further in the playoffs. This is not going to be the only time we'll see them. Absolutely 100% 100 a success for the Ravens this year, without a doubt. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, buy, definitely buy. You have buy, to, buy, buy! You have to feel amazing if you're a Ravens fan right now. You absolutely have to feel amazing. They have a, the brightest future ahead of them, but we have some breaking news right now. Oh, here we go. The Houston Astros tr- uh, cheating punishments have just been handed down by the MLB. Oh, wow, okay. I'm seeing this now. Houston Astros general manager Jeff Luno and... Jeff ma- Lunau. Lunau. And manager A.J. Hinch. Both have been suspended for one year Whoa! after an MLB wow. investigation found the team used technology to cheat during its World Series winning 2017 what? season. Whoa! Boom. There we go, baby. He's done, so he said that they've also got a they also got a five million dollar fine and loss of first and second yes. round draft picks. Yes, so they're both out for the year. Justice. We so, love to see it. So they're both out for the year. Mm. Yes, that okay. hurts. Okay. That hurts. Ooh. And listen, that Ooh, was that is so sweet. that is that is not so a slap nothing, on the wrist. Nothing for that's Cora. a no. That's a big suspension. That's a that is a large punishment. So no. So no, I'm actually like nothing on Beltran, nothing on Alice Cora, nothing on. Well, this used to get me really fired up because I hate it when this kind of stuff happens, and I felt that draft picks and a fine wasn't enough. You've you had Major League Baseball had to make it hurt, and I think they knew that. I think that's. That's why they took a little bit long on this because this was not a protocol punishment. This was discipline, very to Jeff Passan. Discipline for Alice Cora is coming. It is going to be harsh. Nothing for Carlos Beltran. Beltran will not get anything because he was a player at the time. Uh, I'm surprised Cora, they're not suspending Cora, any players. Cora, no, they. I'm reading from Jeff Passan. He says no players will be disciplined by Major League Baseball in the Astros investigation. While Carlos Not Beltran, even suspensions. It doesn't, he, that's at least what he's saying. While, while Carlos Beltran was a part of it, he was a player at the time, thus was not suspended. But Alice Cora is coming, and he says it's going to be harsh. Oh, I listen. I, if I were Major League Baseball, I probably would have been harsher. I probably would have dropped the hammer a little bit harder. But, but this gonna, is this is big. They're not this gonna is strip, big. They're not going to strip the World Series or anything like that. But this is pretty big. No, don't. This that's I don't. Big. I don't care if they strip the World Series. I really don't care. Or postseason or. Take him away from the postseason, but this was pretty big. This was a pretty big one. You're losing your manager for a year. AJ Hinch and Jeff Lunau, their general manager and their and their manager are both suspended for a year, and then they got a five million dollar fine, which is a right. big fine. And then they lost bo- both their first and second round draft picks. That, that's actually round, that's okay. what I'm more that's what I'm more okay. happy about is the loss of the draft picks because. Uh, Hinch, listen, Hinch and the GM getting suspended. That's that's all well and good, but I I said this I said this before when they can't when, even make those draft picks. No, I know, but I, I said this before uh, the when like the the whole story was just coming out, like right after the World Series. I said I'd rather them get I'd rather f- them feel their punishment in the future than just be punished for mm-hmm. the present. You know, mm-hmm. like it's like stripping the title. That's taking away something from their past. 
Like, that's whatever. That's in the past. I would rather them suffer in the future. Oh, I agree. You so, and I were, were in agreement on that. that oh, they, yeah. They had to make it hurt in the future, you know, which is why, again, I, was, I wasn't necessarily against the one-year postseason ban. I was not against that. But I will say this. This is a, this is a legitimate punishment. I'm not upset about this. Fair, I am not upset about that. Fair and just. I would have, I, again, me, I would have been a little bit harder. I would have pushed a little harder. I would have dropped the hammer a little bit harder. But to, uh, first and second round draft picks are gone, $5 million fine, and you lose your manager and your general manager for a full year, that, that hurts. Wow. So I really, so, I, I wonder, I really want to see what, what happens with Cora now. It's going to be, Cora, Cora is going to get slammed. Cora's Alex Cora will get crushed. But why? By why? Him, why? Why? I mean, I get because so, he's the common denominator. Because, but is it going to be similar or more? Is it going to be equal or more severe than Hinch? Uh, probably at least the same. Wow. Probably at least the same. Wow. And we'll pro- we'll dive a little bit more into this tomorrow. Oh my goodness! Um, but that's that's a big one. That's a big one. And 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 again, I, I'm not. I'm not against this. What, what I, I think this is. I think what, this is how, real solid. How could this be a better off season for Yankees fans? How? How could this be a better? Uh, okay, the, the last thing on the table is extending DJ, DJ Gregorius. <laughs> extend, no, ex, <laughs> extending DJ Kansas. LeMahieu for life. No, whatever. Extend, <laughs> ex, extending <laughs> extending DJ LeMahieu for life. Listen, we brought back Guardy. We got Garrett Cole. Astros lose Garrett Cole. Astros get Astros get this punishment. Now the core is going to get this punishment. Oh. It's like Christmas. It's like falling in love. It's fantastic. And they win the World this. Series next year. It'll be the greatest year in Yankee history. <sighs> All right, that does it for us. Matt Catarizzolo, Big J journalist. Evan Mazza, my producer. Uh, I'm Mike Guido. This is the Haystack of the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.